So Zamani, we are now going to work some problems from uh, 3B. And we're going to work questions number 5, 6, and 7. Okay. Let's start off with the first question, question number 5. And uh, see what we get. 5A, that is. Now, uh, 5A, we want to write in the form A plus B root 5, where A and B are con contained in Q, that is a set of rational numbers. So we have the following, 5a, and we're looking at 1 minus 1 over the square root of 5, and then we have 2 root 5 plus 1 over the square root of 5. So. If we want to end up with um, uh, the form a plus b root 5, having a radical in the form of 1 over root 5 is not what we want. So how can we get rid of the radical in the denominators? So interesting problem. So what we can do is work on this term and this term by themselves. And the way in which we could get rid of the radical in the denominator is to essentially multiply by root 5 over root 5. That's the same as multiplying by 1. But you see, what will happen is that the denominator, when we multiply root 5 by root 5, will become 5. And then in that way, we get rid of the radical. Root 5 over root 5. So we do that with both of them. When we do that with both of them, we can uh, now move all the radicals into the numerator. So then that would give us 1. We're not doing anything to the 1, just the, the 1 over root 5 minus, and then root 5 times 1 is root 5, and then root 5 times root 5 is 5. Good? And then we have 2 root 5 plus, and so root 5, if we do that term right here, root 5 times 1 is root 5. And root 5 times root 5 is 5. Excellent. And so now that we have, um, we've done that, we could uh, try to see if there's a need for us to simplify this a bit more. Uh, we certainly can do that. Uh, it becomes now 1 minus 1 fifth root 5, let's just put it in that form, over and now, both of these terms have root 5 in the denominator. If we look at them, both of them have root 5. So that means we should be able to add them. This term here is basically 1 fifth root 5. And this is 2 root 5. If we add them together, we'll get 2 and 1 fifth root 5. So let's just show you what I mean. So that, that's the 2 right here. Plus, this term is basically 1 fifth. Plus 1 fifth. So that is 2 and 1 fifth which is the same as 11 over 5, if we put it as an improper fraction. So let's put it as an improper fraction. 11 over 5 root 5, okay? So we certainly can do that. Now, we have root 5 in the denominator. We want to get rid of the radical in the denominator. What do we do? We now take this term and multiply it by root 5 over root 5 again. But now this time we're going to multiply everything in the numerator. Not just, the, not just um, that first term right here, but rather everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator. Which would then give us root 5 times 1 is root 5. Root 5 times 1 fifth root 5 would be minus one fifth root five times root five. Okay? And then the denominator we will have 11 over five times root five times root five. So you could see how in the denominator, the, when we square the root fives, it will get rid of the radical. Let's squish that a little bit so we make some space. And so that gives us the following. Let's kind of simplify the numerator. So that would be root 5 minus, and we have 1 fifth. Okay? And root 5 times root 5 is 5. 
So one fifth of five is what we're going to get there. And then the denominator will have 11 over 5, correct? Times root 5 times root 5, which is just 5. So now, multiplying, where's what we will get? We will have root 5 minus 1 over, this is, the, the, the fives will cancel out over 11. And so if I divide each term in the numerator by the 11, this down here, we will get the following answer. Let me move things around just a little bit. Squish, squish. All right. So <clears throat> I like to rearrange the terms where the constant is first and the radical is second. So that's the same as saying I will have 1 minus root, f um, sorry, Minus 1 plus root 5 over 11. Okay, so the minus 1 comes first, which will then give me minus 1 over 11 plus 1 over 11 root 5. And that's the answer. There we go. Cool, so that's the first part, part A. Let's do part B. So 5B. 5b, we have the following, 3 minus root 5 over 3 plus root 5. Let's leave some space here, and we have 4 over 3 minus root 5. So when we look at that, do we see an opportunity for difference of squares? I think so. If we look at this as 3 plus root 5, 3 minus root 5, so we could kind of multiply by the terms, right, that would allow us to use the difference of squares. So this would have to be 3 minus root 5 on the top over 3 minus root 5 on the bottom. So now we have different of squares in the bottom, but on the top we will have squares themselves. And then we do the reverse on this side, which would be 3 plus root 5 over 3 plus root 5. And so let's simplify this. First term, let's do the, the first term right here. The numerator will become basically a square. 3 minus root 5 times 3 minus root 5. And what do we get? Remember, it is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So let's see what we get with that. a squared would be 3, 3 is 9. So we could do it in stages. 3 squared plus 2. What's a? a is um, 3, correct? And then what's b? Negative 5. So a, b, negative root 5, sorry negative root 5, and then b squared plus negative root 5 squared. So um, this is what we have. That's, I'm just dealing with this the first term, okay? And we'll do the second term shortly. And then, of course, in the bottom, I have a difference of squares. So it would just be 3 squared minus root 5 squared. So what does that give me in the end? It would be 9 minus 5. And then on the top, I will take 3, 3 is 9. 2, 3 is 6 times so negative 6 root 5. And negative root 5 times negative root 5 gives me positive 5. All right? So it is positive 5 plus 5. The two negatives create a positive. So 5 and 9 is 14. So we are now getting uh, 14. So this part is 14 minus 6 root 5 over 9 minus 5, which is 4. That's what we're getting, the first part. Now what we're going to have to do is work on this second part right here. Let me squish to make some space. So let's work on the second part. 
So the second part, <coughs> so remember this is the answer to the first part right here. First part right here, let's do the second part. I'm going to squish a bit more, make some more space. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we take 4 over 3 negative root 5. And then remember we have 3 plus root 5 over 3 plus root 5. So we will still have difference of squares, which will give us in the denominator 3 3 is 9, 3 squared minus root 5 squared. And the, the numerator, we just multiply everything in the bracket by 4. 4 3 is 12, and 4 root 5. We multiply the root 5 by 4. So now let's put those two expressions together. First of all, before we do that, we will have 12 plus 4 root 5 over 9 minus 5, which is 4. The same thing. 9 minus 5, which is 4. That's 9, and this is 5. 9 minus 5 is 4. Much the same way as we have the 4 up here. All right? Here. Here. Now let's put those two expressions together. And so we have 14 minus 6 root 5, sorry, over 4, minus, don't forget we had a minus before, 12 plus 4 root 5 over 4. We could bring those two numerators together because they have the same denominator, which then gives us... Going to hide it up here, which then gives us the following. We could bring all the terms in one numerator 14 minus 6 root 5, and then with the negative sign here, negative times 12 is negative 12, negative times 4 is negative 4 root 5, and all of that is over 4. So what do we have? Negative 12 and 14 will give us negative 2. And then we have this negative 6 and negative 4. That should give us 10. And so that would be 2, negative 10, root 5 over 4, which then gives us 2 over 4, which is a half minus 4 over 10, which is 5 over 2 root 5. So a half minus 10 over 2, or sorry, 5 over 2 root 5. So the answer to this question is a half minus 5 over 2 root 5, okay? So just to recap what we did, I took each term and multiplied it by um, a value uh, or a fraction, which still has the value of 1, but allows me to use difference of squares to get rid of the radical in the denominator. Once you do that for each term and you simplify it, in the end, you end up with the very same denominator, which is 4 on both sides. And you could add the two numerators. When you add the two numerators, then you will get the 14 minus 6 root 5 minus 12 minus 4 root 5 over 4, which boils down to 2 minus 10 root 5 over 4. And when you divide each term by 4, 2 over 4 gives you a half. 10 over 4 gives you 5 over 2. And that is our answer. Okay? And that was question 5b. Let's do question 5c. Question 5c. So here's the square root of 3 minus 5, root 5, sorry, and 
3 plus 5. Root 5, sorry. <clears throat> one, one of the nice things about that question, when you look at it, you know if you multiply by root 3, like 3 minus root 5 over 3 minus root 5, you're just multiplying by 1. But what is beautiful about it is that it will create a difference of squares in the denominator, but the numerator will have a square. But because that square is under the square root sign, you could take it out of the square root and put it outside. So let's do this. So I'm going to actually make this longer and then multiply by 3 minus root 5 over 3 minus root 5. So I'm not changing anything. But as you could see now, I will have a difference of squares. But the numerator, I will have a square. And because this square is under the square root bracket, I could actually take it outside. So then this reduces to 3 minus root 5. And you don't need to expand it because you're going to take it out. And then the bottom is 3 squared minus root 5 squared. Difference of squares. So that gives us again 3 minus root 5 squared over 3 threes, 9 minus 5. So 9 minus 5 will be 4, and we know 4 is a perfect square, so that works out quite nicely. So now, what do I have? Just to kind of uh, keep all the steps going, so that way we can see that. That will still be equal to 3 minus five, root 5, sorry, squared over 4. So now I have the square root of two perfect squares, one on top of the other. So that should just give me, since I have a square in the numerator, a square in the denominator, that should then give me, when I take the square root of both of them, 3 minus root 5, okay, not squared anymore because I'm taking the square root, over, what's the square root of 4? 2 over 2. And so now if I divide both terms by 2, I will have my answer should be 3 over 2, a half root 5. 3 over 2 minus a half root 5. And that should be the answer. Okay? So let's take a look at what we did again. Taking a look at what we did. First of all, when uh, this is the, the, the initial problem right here, when you look at it, you realize, okay, if I use, um, if I multiply top and bottom by the same value, I need to get rid of the radical in the denominator. So to get rid of the radical in the, de in the denominator, I will multiply by 3 times root 5, Three, uh, 3, sorry, minus root 5. I multiply it by 3 minus root 5 over 3 minus root 5. What that does, beautifully, is that it will give me a difference of squares in the denominator, but it will give me a perfect square in the numerator. All right? So here's my perfect square. I do not need to expand it, just that I noted that it's a perfect square. And then the difference of squares, it turns out to be a perfect square as well. 9 minus 5 gives us 4, and then we have in the numerator a perfect square. So when we want to get rid of the square root bracket, right here, the square root sign, all we have to do is to take the square root of those two perfect squares. Well, the square root of 3 minus root 5 squared is just 3 minus root 5, which is this, and the square root of 4 is 2. So it leaves us with 3 minus root 5 over 2. And to simplify, we divide the 3 by the 2, and we divide the 1 in front of the 5 here, the 1 by the 2, which gives us a half, and 3 over 2, and that's our answer. So that was question number 5, okay? Excellent. Question number 6 is very similar to question number 6 in 3a, so we're going to do that. Question number 6. Okay, so with question number six, what you're going to do is you're going to expand the left side and then try to arrange the terms in such a way that one term will be equal to negative 53 and the next term 
will be equal to 9. So let's see how we could do this. So this is question number 6. Let's work in black ink. 6, there's only 1. There's no A or B. So we are looking at 3 plus 3 root 7 times 5 plus Q root 7 is equal to 9 root 7 minus 53. So I'm going to put minus 53 plus 9 root 7. Why? Because I like the radicals on the right, the constants on the left, okay? So it's not a big deal, but uh, it just makes life easier for me. So now expanding, you're going to multiply each term one term at a time, and that I know you know how to do. So P times the 5, P times this, this term times the 5, and this term times this. When we do that, we get the following. We will get 5P plus P times Q, root 7. So PQ, root 7, plus 3 root 7 times 5 will give us 15 root 7. And th uh, 3 root 7 times Q root 7 will then give us 3Q times 7 squared. So 3 times the Q and the root 7 by root 7 will give us 3Q root 7 squared. Okay, which basically turns out to be 7. So we will just ignore the right side for a moment. We'll come back to it later. Let's just um, try to simplify this as much as possible. So this will be 5P plus PQ root 7. So we can't do any more simplification here. Plus 15 root 7. There's not much we could do. But the seven, root 7 squared is 7. 7, 3 is 21. So that would be plus 21Q. Let me draw that Q a little better. 21Q. All right. So now, uh, let's factorize, not factorize this, but arrange the terms in such a way that we will put the terms with the root 7 together and put those two terms together. So that gives us 5P plus 21. 5P plus 21Q. So that's one term. Plus, and then we could factorize, we have root 7, root 7. Let me just highlight that a little better. Since we have root 7 in this term, and root 7 in this term, we have PQ and we have 15. So 15 plus PQ. So it will be 15 plus PQ root 7. And that's the two terms. So that will be equal to the negative 53 plus 9 root 7. So since we have root 7 here, root 7, the 9 will be equal to 15 plus PQ. So 15 plus PQ will be equal to 9. Okay, and then let's do this in blue. 5P plus 21Q will be equal to the negative 53. Okay, so that's the first part of that question. Now what do we do with that information? We now say, let's take each part and then set it equal to its term. So let's start off with the 5P plus 21Q. 5P plus 21Q is equal to negative 53. All right? 5P plus 21Q is equal to negative 53. And so, let's do something that will allow us to use the value of PQ, which we can get from the second term. So we have this first one. Let's do this as well. We know that uh, 15 plus PQ, 15 plus P, 
PQ is equal to 9. 15 plus PQ is equal to 9. And so therefore I could get PQ is equal to 9. Take away 15 is equal to negative 6. So I know the value of PQ. I want to try to get rid of PQ altogether. What can I do? Well, if I go back to this expression, and I multiply the entire expression by P, I will end up with a PQ term, 21 PQ, and I could substitute the value for PQ in that expression. And that way, getting rid of Q altogether. All right? And that way, I will only deal with P and solve for the value for P. Let's try to do that. Let's put this over to the side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to multiply it through by P. So I'm going to say P times 5P plus 21P, sorry, plus 21Q is equal to negative 53. This is not clear enough. Let's just make that nice and neater. It's equal to negative 53. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by P, both sides. So that will lead me to 5P squared plus 21PQ. 21PQ, right, is equal to negative 53p. Negative 53p. So I multiply both sides by p. That's what I did. So now, bringing um, this over to the side, to the left side, I have 5p squared plus 21pq plus 53 is equal to 0. Okay? So now I have PQ in there. What do I do? Well, look at this. Let's go back here. We know that PQ is equal to negative 6. So I could take that information and plug it in here for PQ. Let's do that. So that would be 5P squared plus 21 times negative 6 plus... Oh, Oh, I forgot to put the P over here. Plus 53P is equal to 0. All right. Let's see what we get in the end. So arranging the terms, that's 5P squared plus 53P minus 6, 6, 6, 6 2, 6, 2, 126 is equal to 0. All right. So that's a quadratic function. That's a, it's not a square, a perfect square. It's just a quadratic function. So let's see what we get from... What can, so let's try to factorize this function right here. So if you're trying to factorize this, we have 5 and 1. And then we say, who? how do we get 53 in the middle? So what's our two possibilities? Well, if I divide 126 by 2... I have, um, I will have 63. Now, 63 sounds like it is 10 more than 53. So it kind of suggests that if I take 63 and 2, I could get the 126, but then the 5, 2 is a 10. I will have to reduce the 63 by 10 to get 53. So I should make this one negative and this one positive. So that what will happen when I cross multiply, and cross multiply, I will have 63 minus 10 will give me 53. Okay? So then it means that I could factorize this into 5p plus 63 times p minus 2 is equal to 0, which means that p is equal to negative 63 
over 5 or p is equal to 2. These are the two possibilities in terms of the value of p. Now we know that pq is equal to negative 6. Let us solve for q given that we know the value of p. I don't know if I can reduce this any further. <laughs> it's getting smaller and smaller. We almost can't see it now, but that's all right because we've already uh, done that part. And so, <coughs> excuse me, we have, let's start off with p is equal to 2. If p is equal to 2, then we have, using the expression, we, have, we know that we have pq is equal to negative 6. So if we use p is equal to 2, 2 times q is equal to negative 6, which means q is equal to negative 6 over 2 equal to negative 3. And then the other case, if we have, if we use p is equal to negative 63 over 5, so negative 63 over 5, that's p, times q is equal to negative 6. Doing all our cross multiplication and everything, 5, 6 is a 30, 63, <coughs> excuse me, times 1 is uh, 63. So what will happen is that we will get Q is equal to negative 6 times 5, cross multiplying, right? And then cross multiplying this way, negative 63 times 1, which is this 1 right here, it will give us negative 30 over negative 63. Now, both of them can be divided by 3, so I'll divide both by 3, which will give me 10. But because the two signs are negative, it will just be 10 over 31. Okay? So that's simplified. So we have two possible answers. One is that we have P is equal to... Um, when p is equal to 2, then q is equal to negative 3. When p is equal to negative 63 over 5, q is equal to 10 over 31. So those are the two possible answers. So, for this question, answer. The answers would be p equal to 2, q is negative 3. Or p is equal to negative 63 over 5, and q is equal to 10 over 31. So that's the answer for that question. Okay? So this one required a bit of work, but nonetheless, we able to, it's the same thing as question 6 in 3a. And last but not least, use the binomial expansion, a plus b to the power 4, to simplify this function. Um, actually, this one, it looks complicated, but it's actually easy. You know. So now, number 7, we have uh, a plus b to the power 4. So if we think of Pascal, it would be uh, 1... I believe it is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, in terms of Pascal. So if that's the case, <coughs> so it would be a to the 4, 4, a cubed b, 6, a squared, b squared, 4, a, b cubed, and b to the power of 4. Well, we are looking at, what's the expression that we have? We have the expression root 2 plus root 3. Root 2 plus root 3 to the power of 4. So that's our A and that's our B. So let's look at, uh, this would be root 2 to the power of 4 plus 4 times root 2 cubed times root 3 plus 6 times root 2 squared, root 3 squared, plus, I'm running out of space, 4 
times root 2 times root 3 cubed plus root 3 to the power of 4. Simplifying that, so we have root 2 to the power of 4. That would be like root 2 squared times root 2 squared, which would be 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So that would be 4 plus. Now, with um, this expression right here, we could break it up into root 2 squared times root 2. Root 2 squared is 2, so it gives us 4. Let me, let me, let me just go back a little bit. I'm going to do one additional steps and manage just to make sure that you see it. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to do root 2 squared times root 2 squared. See that first term here? That's the same as, but we know that root 2 squared is 2. Plus, I'm going to do 4 times root 2 squared times root 2, so that makes it cube times root 3. Why am I doing that? It's because I want you to see that root 2 squared is 2. And we'll be left with the 2 times 3. Continuing, this one is okay. It's just 6 root 2 squared times root 3 squared. That's all right. Plus 4 root 2. But I'm going to break down the root 3 cube into root 3 squared times root 3. So that way root 3 times root 3 gives me 3. And then plus root 3 squared times root 3 squared. That's just allowing you to see that it will become 3 multiplied by 3, which is 9. All right. Very good. Now it will become a lot easier to see. So root 2 squared is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So this would be equal to 4 plus 4 times root 2 squared. Root 2 squared is 2. 2 4 is 8. 8. So we'll get 8 times root 2 times root 3, which is the same as root 6. All right. Plus 6 times root 2 squared. Root 2 squared is 2. Root 3 squared is 3. So it's 2. Sorry, 6 times 2 times 3. 6 2 is 12. 12, 3 is 36. So that's 36. Okay, so let's just repeat that. What we're looking at is 6 times root 2 squared. We know root 2 squared is 2. That's 6, 2 is 12. Root 3 squared is 3. So 12 times 3 is 36. So that becomes 6 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. Okay, 6 times 2 by 3. That's what this part of the expression is. And it gives us 36. The next part, which is here, would be 4 multiplied by root 2 times 3, root 3 squared times root 3. So the root 3 squared gave us 3. So 3, 4 is 12. But the root 2 that is left multiplied by the root 3 will give us root 6. So 4, 3 is 12. 12, root 6. And then, of course, this is... Root, uh, root 3 squared is 3. Root 2 squared is... Root 3 squared is 3. So that's 3 multiplied by 3 plus 9. All right? If we add up all of the values together that we know, we'll be able to add up the 4 plus 36. That's 40. Plus 9 is 49. So that's 49 plus... And if we now add up the ones of the radicals, 8... 26 and 12 root 6, which will give us 20 root 6. That is our answer. Answer, 49 plus 20 root 6. Okay? There you go, Zamani. I think we have it all done. All the questions that you asked me to do have now been completed. I want you to do each one of them after you watch the video and you see how I've done it. Pause and do it yourself over again without looking and then if you get stuck go back and watch the video again and go back and try it again so that way you'll be able to know how to do all of them don't just follow sort of watch it first try to understand pause if you need to pause and make sure you understand what i did and then go back and then go back and then do it all right 
and I think that you'll be okay. Excellent. Okay, baby.